Hello everyone. Um, so we are going to be representing these two diagrams are a front elevation and a plan. We are going to be representing it in first auxiliary elevation and a second auxiliary plan. Um, according to the question, okay. Um, so we are giving these two diagrams. This is a front elevation and this is the plan to represent on a first auxiliary elevation and a second auxiliary plan with the given angles to the horizontal. Our first auxiliary elevation is going to be on the plane labeled x1, y1, which is 45 degrees to the horizontal, and our second auxiliary plan will be on the plane x2, y2, which is 60 degrees to the horizontal. So um, on our paper here, we already have the front view and the plan. And we are going to show how to get the first auxiliary elevation. Now, it is important to note that the first auxiliary elevation is always projected off the plan, while the second auxiliary plan is going to be projected off the first auxiliary elevation. So, in this case now, I'm going to be projecting 45 degrees to the horizontal from my plan, which is this drawing down. Um, and this is my 45 degree line where I'm going to be projecting my plan to. Now in projecting to my X1, Y1 plane, which is a plane for the first auxiliary elevation, um, it is also important to note that my projection lines have to be perpendicular to the plane. So in a case where I have my plane to be 60 degrees to the horizontal, my projection line is going to be 30 degrees to the horizontal, so they can meet perpendicularly. In this case now where I have my to be 45 degrees to the horizontal my projection lines is going to come off at 40 degrees to the horizontal so now I'm, um, so now to project the lines onto the plane I'm going to be using my protractor to measure an angle of 45 degrees and putting it on this edge here and marking off my 45 degrees from the horizontal that's from this point 180 it's going to be um, this place also, I'll do that for three more points. My edge here, the lower edge, I'm going to mark off 45 degrees from the horizontal, which is going to be at this point. And I'm doing it a third time here. I'm going to do it for all the points, actually, so um, not to waste time. Let's mark this here, too. So now I'm going to be projecting my lines on to the plane X1, Y1 from here. Be careful, it has to pass through the points. And make sure your projection lines are as thin as possible. You don't want your drawing looking so rough. Now you can see that it's perpendicular to the X1, Y1 plane. I'll do that for the remaining of the points I have marked. Um, so as you can see now, I've projected all the lines from each edge and point of the plan to my X1, Y1, which is the plane for the first auxiliary elevation. So now I'm going to be drawing the view from the line of projection. That's how I'm going to be viewing this object if I'm viewing it from 45 degree to the horizontal at this angle. So now in drawing my view, Okay, so now that we have projected all the lines and we are going to be drawing the view in from the line of projection. Also note that the lengths we are going to be having on our new view, which is the first auxiliary elevation, must correspond with the lengths we have here in our front elevation. So that means um, here to here, which is 100 mm, has to correspond from here to here, which is like has to be 100 mm. I have to represent the other lengths from here to here which is um, 64 mm, um, here to here is 12 mm, I have to represent them here too and produce a full view from the plan. So I'm doing that now.
all these um, lines from the drawing are carved out from the line we projected as the projected lines we are tracing out each point from this very tall one here down to this land object okay um so this is the full first auxiliary elevation produced from the plan and with the guide of my projection lines you can see the um parts of the front view showing here you can also see the depths from the 45 degree view um all note that all i produce here is from my projection lines from this very tip here that traces to this um the very edge here below that traces to this edge the rib at this point that traces to here and you can see the rib clearly okay so now i've produced the first auxiliary elevation from the plan and i'm about to produce a second auxiliary plan now don't forget that the first auxiliary elevation was produced from the plan while the second auxiliary plan is going to be produced from the first auxiliary elevation if you are asked to produce a first auxiliary plan i'm going to project it from this front elevation here it works like inversely so now to produce my second auxiliary plan remember that the plane is 60 degrees to the horizontal that means i'm going to be projecting each point on the objects which is the first auxiliary elevation i'm going to be projecting them at 30 degrees so that they can appear perpendicular to this plane so projecting this now at 30 degrees to this point here so as you can see i've projected some of the line from the first auxiliary elevation to the second auxiliary plan and do not forget that the angle of the plane for the second auxiliary plan is 60 degrees to the horizontal as you can see in the question our x2 y2 has to be 60 degrees to the horizontal so that means the angle of the plane for the second auxiliary plan will be 60 degrees to the horizontal and this also means that our projection lines from the first auxiliary elevation has to be 30 degrees to the horizontal we are doing this because the projection lines has to be perpendicular to the plane so that is why i have my projection lines 30 degrees to the horizontal now you see that i've projected some of the lines here and i've begun the drawing for the second auxiliary plan i'm drawing the face which you'll be seeing when viewing the objects from 30 degrees behind i'm going to continue the drawing now and you see the full production As you can see, I've fully produced the second auxiliary plan, which I got from the first auxiliary elevation by projecting lines at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Now, if you look closely, you see that each point in the first auxiliary elevation corresponds to a point in the second auxiliary plan. And they are all guided by the projection lines. You can see everything before this is fully produced now you'll notice that i have a mark here that says w equal to 64 mm i got that from my plan what that 64 mm represents is the entire width of my drawing now if you notice on my second auxiliary plan i have a section here that is marked w equal to 64 mm now what that means is the entire length from this point to this point since our second auxiliary plan shows the diagram in a 3d view we have to account for both the length the breadth and the height and that 64 mm which is the width of the drawing is gotten from the plan now you can see that i have 
a line which is parallel to my x1 y1 axis the axis of the first auxiliary elevation and i have another one that crosses the other edge of the plan now getting the distance of both lines it gives me 64 mm which, which is equivalent to the length from here to here or you can see the width rather now that entire width from the drawing is what I have represented here as W equal to 64 mm. Now if you trace that line down, you see that it covers the width of the drawing as seen in the front elevation and also in the plan. So that is all for our drawing, um, the front elevation, the plan to the first auxiliary elevation and the second auxiliary plan. Don't forget that the first auxiliary elevation is always projected off the plan and your projection line should be perpendicular to the line of the plane of your auxiliary elevation. While the second auxiliary plan is projected off the first auxiliary elevation and don't forget so that it has to be perpendicular to the plane. That's your projection lines. Um, thank you for watching our YouTube video. Please subscribe to the channel.